Hello everyone, welcome to valuetrainings.com. So now we'll be discussing the requirements or the goals of building the data-driven framework. Now, first of all, you should be able to read the data from the Excel or the configuration file. Now look, there are two types of data available to us. The one type of data is one which changes frequently over a period of time. And the second type of data is one which never changes or if a change happens, it happens after a very long time. For example, the regular data of your website, say for example, the username and the password or the regular testing data which frequently changes. And the data, like say for example, the URL of the web page or the title of the website, uh, the data that might change over a period of time, but not every time. All right. So we have got two sets of data. The data which changes very frequently is kept in the Excel file or the XML file. And the another type of data we keep in the configuration file. Okay, so like, so in this framework, we have to make the provision for both of the files. All right, say for example, out here, I have this Excel sheet with me, the data for this framework. I have taken three to four test cases over here and arranged the data like this. And every set of data has the run mode column, which signifies whether the test has to be executed with a particular set of data or not. For example, this create lead test, this has got four different sets of data associated with it, but it will be executed only once with first set of data since the run mode for the other set of data is set to no. All right, so I have taken the Zoho.com website and built the framework. It is like a CRM website. Okay, now if we come to our project, the second set of data comes from the configuration file, right, where I have kept the path where the reports would be generated, where the Excel file, where, the, where we have the Excel file, what is the environment I'm running my project on, if the environment is the production environment. Then we have the different login credentials or if else it is the UAT environment, then we have the different login credentials to login into the account. Then the grid run is set to no. That means I don't want to run my project on the, on the grid. If I make it to yes, say suppose, then that means the same framework will run on the grid as well. So with just minimum changes, we can put up the maximum output. Right. And then we have various locators with us, the experts, IDs and all everything in this configuration file. All right. And then we can even keep the title of the web pages, the static text, which has to be checked. Everything we can keep the uh, we can even keep the path of the Excel file and the report folder path, the Chrome driver.exe file, the IE driver.exe file. So various things we can just keep it over here inside this configuration file. Alright, and next we have to implement the test cases and do the validations and all everything in the test in this project. We'll look into that as well. Alright, and then comes the report generation. Now there are two types of reports, the XSLT reports and the extent reports. Extent reports are more famous these days. We'll give you an example. I'll just open up a sample extent report. So every time we run the program, a new report is generated based on the timestamp. Say for example, this is my example of the extent report. I have these test cases executed with me. All right, so out here, as you can see, we have uh, two different login tests with us. One of it is skipping and another one is passing. And then some of the test cases are failing, as you can see over here. And uh, then you can see that we have generated the logs as well. All right. So if you click on any of the test case, you can just see the logs as well that this particular text case, what is this test case doing? It is first of all opening the browser, then navigating to the website, trying to log in with the username and password, then clicking on the login button, right? Then typing in the password, 
right then clicking successfully on the sign in button the login is failed and in the end if the if the test is failing then we have generated the screenshot as well of the error message and embedded it in the reports also all right so this is a very good uh, report we can even see the uh, different view of the uh, website as well if i click on this and can even see the uh, diagrammatic representation of the test cases along with the description as well that is the time stamp when the test case got started and when the test case has ended up moreover uh, we have one more type of report that is the excess lp reports Excess LT reports are not very effective, but we can use that as well. Say, for example, this is the example of the excess LT report. I have it over here with me. You don't have the detailed description of every test case in the excess in the excess LT reports. Okay, and then screenshot embedding is also not easy in the excess LT reports. So extent reports are more better. But, right and then but we have seen the implementation of both the reports in the uh, framework and also uh, putting the uh, logs and all everything and uh, how to uh, put the screenshots as well in the reports everything we've covered in the framework all right then implementing the grid how to run the test cases parallelly and like parallelly on multiple machines we'll also see that as well right so if you look in the project as well over here as we all can see that i have this grid.txt file with me and three configuration file the hub.json file node1.json file and node2.json file these are the configuration files with me right that is out here inside my project grid is like i have one hub and then to this hub two different nodes are connected two nodes means the two pcs are connected to one hub which is known as the main machine the hub and to which we connect other machines which are known as the nodes all right so we'll see how to run the test cases parallelly on the uh, grid okay and as this as you can see that these are the configuration files that we use in the grid implementation so we'll do everything we'll cover everything in the project okay and then reusability and flexibility and implementing the test cases is very important you should have the reusable component in the framework right i should not repeat the code so we'll use the inheritance and then we'll we have the base test class as well which has the uh, lot of reusable functions in it right so flexibility should be there in the framework for example if something changes tomorrow in the application suppose the uh, suppose the majority of the experts only change tomorrow so that is why we keep all the locators and all everything in the configuration file so we keep everything at a single common location and variable things like the expats and all what happens is like other test cases which has been executed all of them they can just read they can just read these values the variable things from the configuration file okay from this common configuration file so if changes if a change happens tomorrow we'll just have to change in the configuration file which really becomes easy for us we'll have to change the excel file path or the or the report path everything we can just make a change in this configuration file and we can just access it directly from here all right and then you should be able to run your uh, project on different environments so we'll ha we have set the environment properties in the configuration file that is a different login credentials according to the environment you want to run your project on right and uh, then integration with the jenkins and scheduling the test cases is very important we have integrated this framework with jenkins and shown it as well right and then you can even schedule the test cases say for example if you have to run your project every day or every month okay and then emailing the reports again very important after the script has been executed the reports are generated you want to email it to all the team members so we have the email class with us inside this project send mail.cs class file which will send the mail to all the team members you have in your project all right and then in the end 
the your code should be easy to change because if you are actually having changes in the real website then it should not be like that it cannot change easily or taking a lot of time to change it that is why we have built the core framework first this framework is such a way that it can be integrated with any website so firstly we will build the core framework which will be having all the features like building the validation functions, the reporting functions, initializing the app.config file, generating the reports, reading the data from the Excel file. All right, everything will have will have in the core framework. And then they will like, and then you can just integrate this core framework with any website. Like I have taken it, I have taken the zoho.com website. So if you have a project, then you can simply integrate with that particular project. All right. And then this is how we will be making the data driven framework.